Seven Deadly Sins Knights of Britannia is not a good fighting game. The title reminded me of the occasional PS2 tie-in game we'd get for just about any anime that aired in North America in the late 1990s and early 2000s. While I have fond memories of those games, many of them don't stand the test of time. <laughs> I'm all for anime getting their chance to shine in the gaming space, but Knights of Britannia feels like a cash-in on a popular series with no new ideas and poor execution. The adventure mode tells the story of season 1 and 2 from start to finish. If you're unfamiliar with the source material, a young princess named Elizabeth seeks out the help of the Seven Deadly Sins after her home is taken over by another group called the Holy Knights. The Seven Deadly Sins are also a very powerful group of knights, and they were exiled. That's sort of the basic rundown. The actual anime itself is on Netflix, Amazon Video, Blu-ray. Definitely support it if you can, because it's pretty solid. Adventure mode consists of the main story as well as a bunch of different side quests you can tackle. Side quests are particularly frustrating because they use the same battle mechanics as one-on-one -on -one battles and two-on-twos but throw a whole bunch of enemies at you instead. The only reason this isn't really a bad thing though is because the enemies feel lifeless as if they were plucked straight out of a Dynasty Warriors game and thrown into a fighting game. There are a handful of unique side quests and main quests in the adventure mode, but they often tend to feel gimmicky. Like a side quest line that has you play as Elizabeth while she collects resources spread out on one of the game's maps. The twist is that she can't attack, but for some reason use Hawk, the mascot pig character of the series, to attack instead. There's also a secret boss battle near the end of the game that amounts to one of the worst that I've played in recent memory. It's just slow and devoid of any fun at all. Fans of the anime series will be disappointed to hear that cutscenes play out with stagnant character models and some of the ugliest lip-syncing I've seen in a while. The character models themselves look fine, and there's actually a couple of locations in the game that I really enjoy, although some are far worse than others due to the game's camera getting in the way of the action in tighter spaces. Destructible environments are also included, and they definitely give Knights of Britannia a bit more of a flashy anime feel that you want in these games. You use a giant walking pig to get around on the game map. Trust me, it makes more sense when you watch the anime. On top of that pig is the Boar's Hat, a tiny little pub where you can start quests and get upgrades. It's the short instances in between quests where you really get to see the personalities of each sin shine as they interact with one another. It's also worth mentioning that while the game does have an upgrade system, it never really feels like it affects much outside of the traveling upgrades you get that let you access new parts of the map. Fights themselves don't fare well at all. While there is some fun to be had with the local dueling modes, Knights of Britannia is online, it's unbalanced, and the adventure mode feels mindless. I was able to beat most of the enemies in-game by matching the square or triangle button depending on my character. Each character is also equipped with a couple of magic moves that can be pulled off pretty easily. It's just unfortunate that mashing the same button can often be more effective than the damage that your magic attacks will dish out. There are also unique ultimate moves given to each character, but they tend to feel lackluster and the framerate can drop considerably during some. It's a shame players are forced into doing the adventure mode to unlock all of the characters, because each of them manages to feel pretty unique. It just stinks that the AI battles are completely devoid of any challenge that requires you to use any of the characters differently. The soundtrack lacks any tunes that are reminiscent of the actual series, which is made up of some fantastic fantasy themes and one of the better ending themes in an anime in my opinion. If you're a hardcore fan of The Seven Deadly Sins, you might be able to find some enjoyment out of this game, but I'd strongly suggest waiting for a price drop of some sort. As for the rest, avoid this game at all costs. There's a slew of other great anime titles that are out already that are way more deserving of your time. For the full written review, head over to DualShockers.com.